a guy. Um, yeah, give me a, you want to type yeah. your phone number on, on yep. the chat? And then we'll get started here in about a minute or so. Yep. So Pete said that the topic is open houses. We are doing open houses today. Yes, my specialty. So uh, yeah, as soon as we get a, um, yeah, get another minute to see if we get everybody in here and then we'll go from there. And I may have you know, to leave in 30 minutes because I have a coaching call. I, this guy, Josh Barker at 9.30. So um, we'll, we'll pick on you first. Then how's that? Oh no! Let somebody yeah. go before me. Then maybe. Uh, second. Are you scared? <laughs> <laughs> I am. Good. Well, this is fun stuff. I mean, the open houses. You know, yeah. I'll just start this off as we get rolling here. And um, <clears throat> uh, Matt needs to come in there, Dre. Um, he's like, I'm here. Um, so the uh, you know, open houses for me. You know, I started in real estate with not knowing one person. Uh, in my area, except for my girlfriend, who is now my wife, who wasn't going to buy a house for me because uh, she was living with me. Um, and so I had to look at what's the easiest way to generate business without having any capital. So I just lost $82 million. It was a bad day. Um, and about $14,000 left to my name. What? And so I sold 36 homes my first year without having a clue of what I'm doing with no training whatsoever. But 28 of those were from open houses. And, you know, and I know the strategy of some of these people here, so we're going to really kick this off and, and have some fun with it and talk about open houses. And I'll just chime in on some of the stuff that I, I learned over the ways. I look like I'm like Don Johnson here with the shirt. Yeah. I, I yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. um, except I think yeah. he had a full, full head of hair. But uh, Dennis, why don't you go ahead and kick it off for us today and uh, okay. talk about your strategies with open houses. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So um, hopefully we're all doing open houses. They're a lot easier to get now, right? Because um, the market's shifting a little bit and there's more houses to show. So um, open houses, when I first moved to San Diego 25 years ago, Pete Middleton and I were business partners and religiously every Sunday and Saturday we would do open houses and we would show up with a suit and tie and people thought we were crazy, but um, we, we, we crushed it. That's how we just started. We had no leads. We knew nobody. And open houses was our bread and butter. We did them every single week for years. And we did, we were really successful with it. So um, my advice to new agents or older agents, whatever, if I was starving, you had zero money, no leads, no sales on the board. I would sit my ass in an open house for 10 hours a day, seven days a week until I just got it going. That's it. I mean, it's the easiest. Where can you sit somewhere and get people walking in to give you their name and number? I mean, there's, there's no other way. You do lead generation all you want. So what we do is um, we do a card like this. Hopefully you guys can see it. And it's just an index card and we have a name, number, all that. Okay, and I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna tell you my technique. I don't know if you guys heard this before, but when somebody walks in the door, we don't keep the, we take the flyers out of the flyer box in the front yard, number one, okay? Take the flyers off the countertop in the kitchen when people walk in, because if they grab the flyer, they can walk by you and you're done. So I stick the flyers in the kitchen drawer behind me. And when people walk in, I just basically say, hey, Mitch, nice to meet you. Um, the owner asks that everybody that comes in sign the open house card. And I hand them a pen and I turn around and shut up. Okay. And then they stop filling it out. I say, while you're doing that, I'll go grab your house flyer. So I go to the kitchen drawer. I shuffle papers around. I keep an eye on them, make sure that they're filling out. And then once they're done, I turn around, give them a flyer and just say, go ahead and take a look around. Let me know if you have any questions at the end. I'll get the card. Okay. And I'll look at it and I'll make sure that they put their phone number. If they don't, if they don't have a phone number, guys, for me, this is my opinion. I think they're just a dead lead because they're not going to respond to email. So I will make sure they have a phone number. And, um, and then after, once they leave, I'll just talk to them. I'll say, what did you think of a home? Usually they don't like it. It'd be great. So are you just looking in La Jolla or are you considering other areas as well? No, we're considering here, here, here. Okay, great. Um, you know, oftentimes we get we get things they call pocket listings, uh, houses that are not on the market. If I found one of those in the areas that you look at, would you want me to shoot you a quick text message and let you know? And they all say yes to that. Then I haven't put their phone number down. Okay. And then, you know, there might be a little more talk along the way. And uh, what I do is I kind of gauge, I'm pretty good at gauging people. So if this is a really, really, really good buyer, I'll put something like that at the very top, A++, top left corner, okay? If they stink, I'll put a C, D, F, whatever it is. So I kind of grade them as they leave because eventually you can have a stack like this of 
100, 200 people, right? You want to know that you want to bring the cream to the top. So on the back, here's another pro tip, is I write about them, right? Came in, came in with family, moved from Chicago, whatever, whatever, job transfer, whatever it is, because I'll jog my memory because there's so many people coming through, I'm going to forget eventually. So that's how I drag people in and capture them. Next tip is, I use these signs right here, okay? You guys have probably, has anybody seen these kind of signs before? <laughs> Betty, I think I've showed you before a long time ago. Um, so, you know, don't, you have to put in your real estate brokerage here somewhere, which I need to do, but um, we, we stick these up. We don't stick up five signs like the average agent. We'll stick in maybe 30 to 40 signs. I mean, literally you go out 45 minutes before you open house and you stick up a bunch of signs, okay? Almost like it's um, when you go down south, but fireworks is a firework. Fireworks, three miles, fireworks, two miles, fireworks, 20 feet, right? Eventually you don't want fireworks, but you're gonna go buy some fireworks. So um, we put these signs up right here and we put up a bunch and it works better, right? If you only put up two signs, obviously you're gonna get less return if you put up 30 signs. Um, the last tip I have for everybody is don't go do an open house from one to four. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. If you're doing all this work of putting up signs, doing this, leaving your family, Get there at 10 o'clock in the morning, leave at five or six at night. Make it a make it a lead generation event. I mean, it's just what why why limit yourself? It's not your job. You're there to get leads. You're not there to sell the house because most people are not gonna buy the house. That's simple. So that's all I have, Mitch. That's perfect. That's awesome. And you know, it's funny, uh, you talk about that time I, mean, I always did 10 to 4 minimum. Yep. It's like if you're gonna work, why not actually work? What a concept, right? And I always and going back on what you said, the first thing you said was. Um, you know, doing open houses every day. If you're a newer agent or a new agent, you should be sitting in a vacant house every single day doing your work. You know, use your, your hub, you know, your hotspot on your phone so you can get wireless and you should be there every single day. There's no reason not to. Your entire business is based on lead generation and there are no better leads than open house leads. We're going to go over to um, hey, some of our new kids on the block, block here. Um, hey, Ryan Grubb, I have never met you before. But um, uh, welcome, my boy. We hear you're a rock star open house guy. So what can you share with our group here about how you became, what's that, did a half a million dollars in GCI at 28 years old from open houses? Take it away. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for letting me talk. Um, I, uh, I had a, a strike of good luck uh, because I teamed up with the right people at the right time. And I think open houses, the key thing for me is like finding the right open houses. Um, I didn't want to just go about it casually and I didn't want to just like do any open house. I wanted to do the open houses that were first on the market. And how do you do that? You have to meet up with the good listing agents and build relationships. And I think that's a key thing to remember for people is like building really good key relationships with the top listing agents in your area so that you do get first pick at the open houses and that you do get the option to do these open houses that the good buyers come into. Um, and the thing for me is just like capturing as many leads as possible. And it's always trying to have a hook because if you're just there for four hours casually, um, you know, you could easily just be the nice guy and have people come in and out, but you need to have a way to capture their information. If you don't get their information, you're never going to talk to them again. So having a, a good system in place with it, um, having people sign in or having the hook that I like, I like to use a hook where it's like off market properties. So most people who are looking to buy a house want to find an off-market property. And that's kind of like my niche is knowing a bunch of off-market properties at the time. And I just say, hey, if this house doesn't work out for you, my team or people I'm, I'm connected with have, you know, three or four houses coming up next week or the week after that. Would you be interested in taking a preview at that? And a lot of people who are looking for a, for a house will say, yes, I'm interested. In that. And I go, perfect. OK, do you text? Yes, you text. What's a good number? Capture their number. And then I follow up with them. And everyone says it's all about the follow up. And I mean, I just got in contract on a buyer that I met in an open house with a week ago. I mean, I met, I met him two and a half years ago. And most people would not talk to someone they met two and a half years ago. But I know it's a long game. And I try and connect with as many people as possible. Because if they're not buying within the first three months, they might be buying in six months, years. And that takes a lot of, you know, discipline and, and patience to wait two and a half years. But Thankfully, I left a good enough impression to where when they were ready, they reached out to me too. So it's good just to have a good follow-up with people because you could have hundreds of leads, but if you don't connect with them, you're not going to close them. 
So for me, it's, it's finding the right open houses, being strategic. And then if you can even double down on a certain neighborhood and do neighborhoods where, like I try to stay in my community where it's like Folsom, El Dorado Hills. I don't just go to like, you know, 40 minutes away or an hour away. I try and stay within the same neighborhoods so that I'm meeting the same neighbors. I'm meeting the same people who are looking for houses. And I get to know the area super well. Like my other, like uh, I used to do new construction a lot as well too, because regardless of people even want new construction, everyone likes to come into new construction because they want to see the new and the shiny thing. So they just want to get ideas to how they're going to remodel their house. And so I found like I had really good traction on getting leads at open houses from new construction. And I only closed maybe like one or two from new construction, but I had a lot of leads that bought houses that weren't new construction that I originally met there. So for me, it's trying to be strategic, finding the right open houses. If you get them the first week in the market, awesome. If it's vacant, then you can start doing it like they're saying, you know, during the week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I try to piggyback off of other people's open houses too. So if you're seeing other open houses that are going from one to four, I don't just try to do like 11 to two because I try to get buyers that are going to be coming all at the same time so that I have maximum amount of traffic because if I'm 11 to two, then I might not be getting people who are showing up at three to four because I've already closed down, whatever it is. Granted, you're not going to have that problem if, if you do what the last guy said, if you're just from 10 to four, then, uh, you know, you're going to capture everyone. So I think it's good to, to stay consistent in the area you're in, um, link up with some really good listing agents. And then for me, the, the like why I closed half a million dollars too is because I was really good at not selling myself, but selling my partner, Gail DeMarco. And so it was really easy for me to just say, hey, you know, if you're looking to sell your house, you have to really consider working with this top agent, Gail DeMarco. She was a person that I was going to use if I was going to sell my house. I'm a real estate agent. Like you have to meet with, you have to connect with her. It's right. you doing yourself a disservice if you did not at least talk to her. And so it was really easy for me to sell versus saying like, hey, I'm, I'm the top agent. I know this area better than everyone. You should use me. So it was really like I could be super confident and sell someone else to get the appointment. And that's kind of how we captured a lot of listings. And that's how we met more buyers is because I was able to sell the team or sell my partner or sell someone else. Um, and I want to so add something to that, uh, Ryan, because yeah. for all you agents out there that are new and saying, how can... How can I go into a million dollar home or I mean, my average price, I mean, that you've probably held open is like a million three to a million five, right? Some really high end. Now, when Ryan first came to us, I didn't even want to hire him, right? He was a killer. Uh, he worked with KW, but he would call us consistently. Can I do an open house? He was 27 years old. So I want to talk about, you know, and Val, my partner, Val Turner kept saying, oh, you got to meet this guy. You got to you know, meet this guy. I'm like, no, we don't need to hire anybody. You know, he's too young. He's too young. Well, she said she'd gone to an open house and he pulled out his measuring tape to measure for her clients. And that really stood out to us. Like he it wasn't just about him. He was, he knew that he didn't have the buyer, but he went to his car, got a measuring thing, measured, treated our clients like they were his. So when he started doing open houses, he had such confidence. I mean, he's also an ex-Marine. So he really, you know, carries himself well. So I don't care if you're 25, 27. He has blown it up at 27 years old to be able to make over 500,000 in GCI, right? You know, and he hit over 550. I mean, he's just consistent. And guess what? This guy goes out in, the, in his lake, the lake with his family. He's got two young babies. He's, you know, he has a really great quality balanced life. And he's always the first one to raise my hand. Do you have an open house? So he came over to us and he's just taught us so much. And it's true. If you edify the person you're doing an open house for, you know, like my son's on this call and he's out in Jersey and, you know, I just tell him, go to the other listing agents, you know, and edify them and just, you know, tell them I'll use your signs. I don't care because nobody gives a shoot, you know, whose name's on the sign. It's that connection. And when Ryan is in front of somebody, He's so transparent, so sincere, and he has a heart to serve that people just gravitate to him. 
So like when anybody, you know, and there's people that, you know, can do an open house and have no luck. And can I just tell you what his CRM is? An Excel spread. I used to give him shit all the time. I'm like, Brian, what, you know, we, we've got these great CRMs. He uses a little Excel, Excel spreadsheet and he has the best follow-up. So, you know, that's his prospecting. And, and he's, you know, when you've closed it, million five he gets us so many listing appointments and now i go to a listing appointment with him and i sit back and shut up and he runs the whole show at 20 how old are you 29 30 now oh, oh shoot happy yeah. birthday no. <laughs> time for retirement but, right yes but, but, but it's yeah, wonderful it's it's yeah. easier to use whatever crm that like someone said the best crm in, in the world is whatever you use and so you just got to figure out what you use. I mean, there's thousands of CRMs out there. So if you can do it on a, a notebook, I mean, hey, that works. So whatever's just going to keep you involved to follow up with them. And yeah, it's like Gail said, if you edify, like I was always self-conscious at the beginning because it's like I never even did a listing when I joined the team. And so I started getting all these listing appointments because I just used the team's numbers. I used the team success. I just kept referring to we instead of I. And that was a much easier you know, it's like I get all the credit for things I haven't done yet. And then eventually you build up your track record and then you can get a little bit more confident. So that's my that's my two cents. I'm sticking to it. There you go. Well, I really appreciate you coming on today, Ryan, and sharing because that was awesome stuff. Um, let's go over to um, Mr. Batiati because, you know, he's like, uh, you know, my hero because we have the same hairdo. But <laughs> good morning, everybody. Um so I think the boy, those are all really great points. Um, I think the thing to remember with open houses is what everybody out there is looking for. So everyone's looking for a deal. Everyone's looking for maybe a cosmetic fixer. Everybody's looking for, you know, an REO, a foreclosure, et cetera. So to get people's information, um, I think it's really important to get into a conversation with them, obviously, get them to sign in. But some people are hesitant to, to give up their information unless there's something in it for them. And so what I think is the best thing to say to people at an open house is, you know, uh, find out what they're looking for, but then also talk to them, say, would you be interested in that? You know, we get a lot of fixers, we get pre foreclosures and we have lists that we email out to everybody. If you're interested, I can put you on a list and uh, let you know about new lists. And we also just take a lot of listings. And so I can let you know about new listings right when they come on the market. That way you're not gonna be in a multiple offer situation. That's what everybody, every buyer out there wants. So give them what they want. Don't just say, hey, are you, you know, do you have an agent and can I help you and blah, blah, blah. Um, so I think that's really important. The other thing um, is that most of the people that come through, or a lot of the people that come through open houses are going to be neighbors. And yeah, some of them are coming in because they are curious what the house looks like, but a lot of them are thinking about selling, especially right now. So have something there, you know, it's very important to dress professionally. And um, I've gotten lots of listings from people who contacted me and said, I met you, you know, X amount of months ago at an open house and I was really impressed by you, et cetera. So have something you can hand out uh, besides just a business card so that they'll remember you, you know, something, you know, go to whoever you use and get a really nice pre-listing packet you know, print it up. It doesn't have to be incredible, but just anything that you can hand to them that's nice enough that they're not going to throw away. Um, but it's true. I agree with what Dennis said completely is if you're going to go through all that trouble of putting signs out and tastefully taking a day off, um, you know, why do it from, you know, 11 to two, why not just park there? And you, the other thing is you can do open houses on vacant homes all week long. They're, I mean, you literally, you can sit there, get their Wi-Fi code, and or use your hotspot and just sit there and work and people will wander in, you know. So the other thing, and I learned this from from Brent Gove years ago. Brent had a didn't he do a class or something, or he had a training thing like open house on steroids or something. Yeah. And he would always use that example of the 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 fruit stand on the side of the road that has like, like Dennis said, like has like 20 signs <laughs> leading up to it. And before you know it, you're like, I gotta pull over. So that stuff works. Um, I agree, you know, we didn't do a lot of open houses, obviously, during the pandemic and after the pandemic. Um, my pitch to a lot of sellers was, you know, we can sell your house in one weekend and we don't have to do open houses and all that. But fortunately, that's over now. And open houses are a great way. That's the other thing is 
when you go on a listing presentation, if you're taking a listing, you always want to take their temperature and see how they feel about open houses. Some people do not want open houses. They hate them. Some people said, well, we, we bought this house through an open house. So if you have one of those listings, it's a great opportunity to generate leads and it's free. That's the other thing. It doesn't cost you anything to do an open house except your time. So awesome stuff. That's all I got. Um, it's hard to follow you guys. You guys are all rock stars. It, it, and it's interesting, you know, because everybody looks at these things. And I learned early on in my career, the first day, actually, um, I had two ladies run up to me and say, um, you know, welcome to the brokerage. Uh, we're going to give you some tips right now. Don't do Internet. Well, that was my background. Don't do floor time because that was a thing back then. Not anymore. <clears throat> and don't do open houses. And I'm sitting there going, well, if people are coming to me, how can that be a bad thing? Like people are calling me. How can that? I don't understand the concept of that's a bad thing. And I, and I actually did my first open five days after I started my first Saturday and sold my first house my first Saturday um, from an open house without having a clue how to do things. Uh, just to throw a couple of quick things out real quick um, on the capturing leads also. Uh, what we've instructed our agents locally to do now, which has worked really, really well, is not have any paper at all to hand them and say, let me text you the link to the, to the, um, you know, the listing. You know, let me text you a link to the other properties on the market because that now you're capturing the phone number right away uh, without being intrusive about doing it. Uh, you also have, um, you know, me and Bill Crawbrock talk about this. Uh, you have uh, QR codes now you can use to do all that stuff. There's all sorts of ways of using technology now to capture without being intrusive on the stuff. Um, let's go over to... Um, Cameron, you look like you're, you're COVID free. Uh, you look hyper again. I love that. Oh it's man, a, I feel so much better, you guys. It's been, uh, it was kind of rough, but I feel better. So, and we were, uh, COVID, we did we were COVID partners there for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we were COVID buddies for about a week. That was fun. But uh, we, we did open houses throughout the pandemic. Obviously, Florida, we're kind of wild west down here. No one, no one cared. So we did them throughout it. Uh, lots of signs. Love that. That's obviously super important. Having lots of signs out is the only way you're going to get anybody that's not finding you on Zillow or realtor.com or one of the uh, IDX sites that are sending out your open house, right? Um, so lots of signs. First impressions. This is really important. I've done some open houses that I've stopped by other agents and you show up and it looks like they're going out boating or they're going out golfing. <laughs> and it's like, oh, are you, are you the agent or are you just so, you know, and, and maybe that's okay for a lot of people. I just think in my personal opinion, Dressing in a collar shirt or, or a, a nice dress, I, I just think that looks better. It stands out when they come in, they see you as the professional immediately. Um, obviously, what I use is a little bit different than you guys for sign-ins. And I think that uh, I really hope some of you guys check out the system, but I want to show it to you. So I bought this stand and it's kind of heavy, but it looks like this. Don't hit the fan. Okay, you put an iPad here. You put your iPad in here, okay? And then you can put flyers or whatever here. And you put this right in the front door. Okay, so when they first walk in the front door, they're greeted to a stand with an iPad. Now, with the iPad, you have your open house tools. Every CRM that I've used, uh, Get Response, KV, they all have open house tools. You load up that app, and it just says, what house are you doing an open house for? And you'd say, I'm doing open house for 123 Main Street. It says, great, here's the sign-in sheet. And you can make it so that name, email, phone is required for them to sign in. So they step in and it says, hey, enter your, your name, email, phone number. At least in my demographic here, guys, in South Florida, we're a little bit older. So we're, you know, maybe 45 plus. People will walk in, they, they go, oh, okay. And they just enter their information. It's, it's mind boggling. It's great. It changed my open houses because I no longer have to ask for any of that stuff. People just intuitively see the open house sign in obviously with i use kv core so it says you know welcome to open house at 123 main street please provide your info it has a really nice picture of the house boom 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 so they enter it obviously if they walk past it i just say hey guys i'm so sorry but everyone just asked us to sign in they seen the sign in they know you know subconsciously they just broke the rules even though they didn't they go oh okay no big deal and then right back to it so what i do then is once they pop into kv core I have them on an automatic drip. So I, before the open house, I set up a, uh, a bomb bomb video that just says, hey guys, thank you so much for stopping by my open house. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you forgot, my name's Cameron Smith. I'm the local expert here. I wanted to share with you a few other listings. And in that same bomb bomb email or that email, I provide a link to all the other open houses, right? 
What does that do? Well, then they see if they pop back in when they leave and see what houses they're looking at. It starts the follow-up process. Um, that has really changed my open houses, you guys. Having that immediate video go out to reaffirm who you are, that you are the local expert, that you have stuff to provide them, it gets so many calls from people 30 minutes later. Hey, you know, we just got your email. We were looking, had a couple of quick questions. Love to help you. The other thing is, is after they sign in and they walk in, obviously the next thing you do is you're going to be right around wherever you're sitting with your computer. And the first thing I says, hey guys, do you have any questions? That's it. And then you just listen. Uh, no, we don't. Or yes, we do. Or, or whatever it may be, but it gives them the opportunity to talk to you. And if they say, no, that's okay. Say, okay, great. Well, if you do, I'm here to help. I have some more information for you guys if you want it. And then you shut up. And what do they do? Oh, yeah, of course. We will. And then they walk to you again. So you've had them approach you twice without ever selling anything. Do you have any questions? No, I have some information. Do you want it? Yes, great. By that time they come to you, you start talking. Hey, where are you guys from? Um, what's bringing you down here? How long are you staying? Did you see the other open houses going on in the neighborhood? No, great. Let me send that to you. Do you see any homes that aren't doing an open house that you want to see? Great. I can show those to you as well. What time would be you know, good this afternoon? Or my very favorite, guys, this is the best. And this is, I've never, I've never been able to make this work with my team members, but I really love to, is the buddy system. Have another agent with you that if, if they say, no, we didn't see you know, home on one, two, three, uh, four street, you know, three homes down. Oh, I can show it to you right now. You've already called the agent. You know, hey, can we see it? We're doing an open house. They say, yeah, let's go look at it. You drive them down the road, or if it's next door, you walk them next door. You, you look like you're the expert because you got all these other homes. And I guarantee you when they get home at the end of the day, after you sent them a video, you sent them a text, you sent them a list of open houses, you took them next door. If they've asked, you're going to be the number one agent and they'll call you and they'll say, Cam, you stood out for us or, or you know, you, you stood out so much. We want to hire you as our agent. And we want you to find us their house. Those are the best calls to get you guys because you're not having to prospect out. They're coming back to you because of the service that you did up front. Um, again, though, dress properly, look professional. Do you have any questions? Um, and then obviously provide, 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 provide. That's the best thing. Uh, tell us where you got the stand. Stand is on Amazon, you guys. Look for iPad security stand. Um, it's, it's made so that people can't see your iPad and it's, it's like probably 65 pounds. So it's pretty heavy. Um, so you got to load it into your car, but it's, it's the way to go. That's it, guys. Pounds. I have to lift weights to bring that into a house. <laughs> um, awesome stuff, Kevin, as always, uh, let's go over to, um, uh, my, my little Orlando friend, Renee and, and, uh, hear what you guys do for open houses your, your, with your team. Hello, everyone. Renee Funk in Orlando. I don't know if it's a little friend, though. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Where do I even begin? I've been taking notes. And what I would say, every person who's gone already in there speaking, there's one commonality and that each and every one of you are being very intentional about your approach with open houses and yes, I'm on the bandwagon of, in my opinion, open houses are the number one opportunity we have as realtors to build and earn relationships within our community and bring more transactions into our real estate business for next to free. Yes, there's sweat equity and that's not free, but without putting any money across the table. So this is a very passionate topic. Um, Matt mentioned all day long, and I think that's really important when we're talking about timing around open houses. Timing is a very intentional strategy, in my opinion, with scheduling. Understand the location, because a property that perhaps is in a location that's right next to where the farmer's market is held on Fridays from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in town by Main Street, may have a different strategic scheduling time than a property that's located near the school bus route where parents are going to be bringing their kids to and from the bus stop or to and from school. So really be intentional. Um, it's, I don't hear realtors talk very often about scheduling open houses in the evening. We've as a team had a property that was located downtown in Windermere that was right next to where movie in the park was on Friday nights. And I said, you know what, do an event nighttime, Friday night, open house, right? So really think and be intentional about your scheduling. I love that Matt shared that. Um, 
Mr. DeMarco, I don't want to call you Gail. What was your name? Ryan. What's that? Ryan. Ryan. Okay, Ryan, yeah. you, you're you a rock star. Love that. You use the word, you, you're not casual about your strategy. And I think that's so spot on. Um, one of the approaches that I see realtors do incorrectly is we think about those who attend an open house as leads. People that attend an open house are not leads, they're visitors. And so when I see an agent host an open house and I look the next morning on our team and say, how many visitors did you have at your open house yesterday? The answer is very different than how many leads because what I found over the years is agents would think, well, I had 20 visitors, but only three were leads. And that would bring me to ask the question, well, why weren't all 20 visitors a lead? And so we've broken up our visitor type into four types. Number one, we have pers prospective buyers. They're obviously amazing. The second type of visitor is a neighbor you often probably hear them referred to as looky-loos or nosy neighbors or just looking. Quite frankly, those are my favorite visitors. You will have buyers that visit with their realtor present. We saw a strong uptick in buyers attending open houses with their realtor present over the last year. That's okay. That's good. That's allowing you to build your realtor to realtor colleague relationships. And there's opportunity there. And then the fourth type of visitor at an open house is a buyer who's visiting, who shares with you because you've asked the question when they enter that they do have a realtor that they're working with. And that's okay too. Those type of visitors are really great. We honor and respect that. We ask them which realtor in town are you working with? And we proceed to give the tour and make sure that we're providing the great service and experience of the open house. Every single one of those four types of visitors has a very strategic follow-up plan. Um, two of four, the, pros the prospective buyers and the nosy neighbors, neighbors who are never going to move, those follow-up plans are seven touches as a post-open post house strategy. And one of the areas I see agents mess up often is they're not being intentional about their follow-up after the open house. If one of our agents comes to us and said, I, op I held an open house and I didn't input any visitors into my CRM after, whichever CRM you use, use is fine. I don't, it doesn't matter if it's a spreadsheet, but they didn't input it and become intentional about their follow-up. You know what I ask of that agent? Next time there's an open house, I prefer you go to the beach with your family because family time is incredibly important to our mental well-being. And straight up, if we're not going to be intentional from the moment we plan to schedule the open house through the prep the morning of, through the day of the open house, and then the, the post work, which the post work is where the magic's at, go spend time with your family and don't host open houses. And I mean it, it is so incredibly important. I uh, want to talk about the touchless check-in. I learned that from Mitch. Touch check-ins are amazing. Uh, we implemented touchless check-in and no paper. We're in Florida. We did host open houses during the pandemic throughout. And we said to heck with paper. No one wants to touch it anyway. And we also implemented touchless check-in. So when a prospective visitor arrives, we say, so great to have you. Thank you so much for visiting. The sellers have requested that every visitor checks in. May I ask that you text me your name and your email address, and then I'll send you my contact information. And we send a digital business card back in text because that digital business card has everything. You can have a link to your um, recent listings. You can have a link, whatever. You can build out your digital business card to whatever you want to draw attention to. We send that back. Now with touchless check-in, here's something I hear agents often give pushback on. Oh, but the visitor did not want to give us any information. They said no. So I just let them tour around. Well, I have an additional perspective about that. When you have a visitor at your open house that is not interested in giving you their contact information, I'd like to remind you that 
if we're going to drive a car at a dealership, we have to give a driver's license, right? We have to have contact information. So please, and I'll touch on safety in a moment, but I want to share with you, if they will not give you the information and text you in the touchless check-in process, that's okay. Say, totally understand. I have an additional way that we can do a tour. The sellers ask for us to let you know that we can do a private showing. If that works better for you, here's my contact information in my digital business card. Give me a call and let's set up a private showing later. I'm happy to give you a call. How about five o'clock today or whatever time that you prefer? She freeze. Hi, Renee. And that. Renee, can you say that? that? There you yes. Are. <laughs> Which part? Where did we leave off? You, you were just going over if they're not willing to give the. Uh, you're, if they're not willing to give the information, you can send them your digital business card. Yes. Yeah, private showing. So when they arrive as a visitor, we have a couple options. We can do the check-in if you wouldn't mind. Please go ahead and text me your information and we'll get you, uh, we'll give you a tour. And if they say, no, nah, I'm not really interested in giving you my information, I'm just looking around, totally understand. We could do a private showing. Here's my contact information and the sellers requested that we do a private showing at a later time. How about today at five o'clock that I give you a call? We've really taken that approach, we let our sellers know we're going to do that. And it is from a couple perspectives. First and foremost, it's safety. We have a responsibility, in my opinion, to do everything we can to understand that the, the opportunity for an open house is one of the most insecure um, opportunities for realtors to have issues. Um, make sure if you're not already following the Beverly Carter Foundation, you do. When you go to the beverlycarterfoundation.org, there are a ton of safety resources. Uh, but we talk to our sellers about that. And we're very, we take that seriously. Two more quick things, and then I will go to mute because I know I've shared a lot. Is the buddy system. I loved Cameron talking about the buddy system. We have implemented the buddy system. Our agents are not allowed or permitted to do open houses without buddy systems. And where once we had a little pushback on that pre-COVID, during COVID and certainly the last year when our open houses had lines out the door, the agents stopped giving us any pushback about that. In my opinion, open houses should have buddy systems for multiple reasons. Number one, safety. Number two, the best service opportunity for those that are attending. It's very simple. The customer visitors are back and forth. There's an agent that stands by the door, accepts that visitor. The other agent is off in the distance, maybe in the family room or in the kitchen. When that visitor is processed through the touchless check-in, the agent takes the tour. The next agent steps up near the front door. It's that simple. We haven't had any issues with it. And then Great. finally, I'll share that one of our listing differentiators we found an incredible traction with with our sellers, and this is presented in the listing consultation, is we list on Thursdays. Properties hit the market on Thursdays. And Friday morning, we have an opportunity, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., I will bring all of our agents on our team or in our office or however you want to word your organization. And there's some powerful approaches with that. Number one, I don't need you to do anything. You don't have to lift a finger. It's important for us as a team that every single agent understands the product that they're going to help go sell because we're a team. We're going to come to the property. We'll all do a product familiarization tour from nine to 10. And every single agent I bring that morning is going to go live on their social media to launch the product into the marketplace collectively. So by doing that, all of our agents, and we'll usually have anywhere from 30 to 40 agents attend, they're all going live. And nearly every single seller says yes. And that's been a huge game changer for us on the listing acquisition. Ask anybody, are you working with a realtor? Ever, ever, ever. It's which realtor in town are you working with? 
It's the most important question you can ask. If you say, are oh, you working with a realtor? You're going to get a 90 plus percent. People say yes. You say, which realtor in town are you working with? They're going to either say somebody or not. Now, here's the caveat to that. If someone says something, I'm actually going to call that agent because I love building relationships with agents. I'm going to call the agent and say, hey, your customer, by the way, came in and saw, your, saw my listing today. Right? Very important. And also, if they say I'm working with somebody, But I'm also just because someone registered on our website doesn't make them a customer, right? So, you know, also you've been looking at probably with Bill. Oh, no, we just registered his website. Okay, so you're not really working with Bill. Well, I guess not. Uh, but again, I would not, I, I would never steal a customer. If they're really working with Bill. I'm not going to take that customer. Great, great points, Vinay. Let's go up to uh, Gail, because I know you have to get out of here shortly. Gail, why don't you go ahead and uh, give some wicked awesome tips like you always do? Well, honestly, I also think there's a huge opportunity being missed if you're not pre-marketing to everybody on the street and Some people will say to the, you know, hey, you know, we're having a special showing for the neighbors prior. I don't do that because most of our clients don't want the neighbors coming in, right? You know, so if they, and the, so that's backfired on this, but really door knocking the day before. And I really feel it's faced like I built my entire business on open houses. I don't, you know, agree with, uh, and we're not here all to agree with, you know, uh, either open houses or, See, right and it's easier when you're sitting there i mean i'll try it the other way because i am coachable i'm open-minded right um it'd be a good way to get away with my mother since she's moving in with me i'll stay all day i'll sleep there <laughs> but you know i feel getting you know like the, the super open house you know where you just really make it i make a buffet so i used to do four open houses every weekend all of my business i've been doing this you'll see that they are, aren't even available and you'll call the agent. Hey, um, I see I'm doing an open house. I don't know if you're available. I have another agent who could host your open house at the same time. So we can actually, you know, feed off of each other. And usually they're open to it. Um, we probably, uh, we tell, we launch our, on Wednesday. So here's what we do. We launch our house on Wednesday. This way, Thursday, we want to give it a week. seeing each other right even when the market is slow so then we really push them to saturday sunday two hour spots is what we do because we want them th those are the serious buyers that are coming not ah, just stop by but i could be missing a big part of the market right i mean that's why i'm on this call not to just share but to learn from you guys um and the follow-up i'm terrible at it so whenever we go Will not represent a buyer so it gives them that confidence so i bring a second agent whether it's ryan or it's you know somebody else from our team so they'll work the buyer so they're represented and then i can control the transaction um and they don't always get it right but i will tell you we get more listings from our open houses than we get buyers so they say listings have babies absolutely so that's why we Or how do you split that deal? 
Um, so I'd like to have a listing agent and the buyer's agent. But um, if the two agents want to come to an agreement and say, hey, you take one, I'll take the other. That's fine. We don't care. So, yeah. Cool. That's all Great I got. stuff. Um, that's all I got. It's so much fun. Like we all have all I, all we have is probably more than the average person in our pinky, right? Um, let's go over to uh, Miss Betty. Uh, Rockstar. Said is so good is like going out to the neighbors, even door knocking, because you want them to see you in the neighborhood um, because you're also looking for listings. So a lot of uh, invitations out, maybe even a slide broadcast out to the neighborhood, um, even inviting your past clients, social media, where you go in and take a video of the house before, even though that might not be a good idea because that might uh, cause them not to come. But while you're there, you could do a video. Um, I guess... That house and um, let's see what have we missed um, videos social media invitations door knocking the neighborhood uh, letting people see you lots of signs we've talked about um, is there anything that we're missing I, I can't think of it cool. I know there's, a, there's, there's we have a lot of like phenomenal open house things here Betty inside but Cameron's stuff, dancing but over there a question yeah. just Cameron, ask it Cameron Levenger pad that has a space on the left side and then just a normal writing line on the right side. The reason I love these is because I can put the, the, the client's name here and highlight it. It's really easy to find. And when I'm doing open houses and I see them pop into the CRM when they first sign in, I write their name down so that when they walk up to me, I go, I, I, I just want having your one agent walk folks through the home completely like are they are they walking side by side room through room or are you allowing people to kind of freely roam the the, the open house Renee quick question for you we do our best and the goal is that an agent is within proximity and guiding the visitors through the open house and doing a discovery, right? Because touring an open house ultimately is a buyer consultation. While you're touring and looking at real estate, let's call it what it is, right? Opportunity to ask a ton of questions. So that agent would stay with the visitor throughout and the buddy agent is already in place at the door. During the height of when we were getting 20 and 30 and uh, people in a line around the corner and A client, we'll call them a client, to, you know, interview them, see what they're all about, learn, connect with them, uh, and having another agent be able to take the next person and intake, it allows it just to free, because again, the worst thing that I think a lot of us have been through is you're, you're talking to someone, they're kind of warmish, they're kind of, you know, hey, have you guys, you know, yeah, they sound good, but really, maybe not. They're, they're happy to continue on, but you really love to keep learning with them, but you also want to make sure that you're able to assist everybody. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, you guys, is that if you're doing social media like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, these open houses are amazing for content. You can make so much content out of a three-hour open house. People walking in, you can do a time lapse of people walking in. You can do talk.
Okay, you can talk about anything. Um, you're welcoming people, you're engaging with them. And then by the time you're done with it, you gain 500 extra followers that stick with you for the rest of your life. So using open houses for your social media are key. Live, uh, reels, obviously, all of that stuff, guys. Do it all and make sure that you're, you're using uh, the time that you're working on your open house also to build content. Because if you are doing content, strategy right so we were actually just talking guys um a little bit about instant video text messages and doing them in front of the house that you're in and that that gives you instant credibility it also allows people to reference who you are with the home that they just seen uh and we're actually sending them out while people are still in the home so you sign in through the the, the tablet it sends it to me the crm sends out the first text message through bomb bomb I think it's amazing. I think that we shifted from video emails post open house to video texts and what our agents are testing out. And I know it's a pain in the butt. Everyone roll your eyes because it's one more prep item, but our agents are currently uh, testing when they stand in front of the house right before the house goes into open house mode and say, this is Renee Funk. Thank you for visiting our open house at 123 Banana Street today. I'm happy to answer additional questions. And I have a few additional suggestions for homes that are hitting the market or active right now that I'd like to send over to you. Let's connect. Whatever your hook is to send them more information. But the key is you're in front of that same property thinking that, remember, these visitors, they've probably visited multiple homes in a day. You want them to remember you. You're the only person they're going to remember. And by doing that, it's a great strategy. We've been seeing great connections and improvement to our. Um, Changed our social media game because when you talk into your phone, unless even if you're using AirPods or something like that, it doesn't sound as good as Renee does when she's talking through her thousand dollar little Shure microphone there. Now, this is a Shure iPhone microphone and it, it makes it sound like you are there. And when you're listening through an iPhone speaker, if you have crystal clear audio, you guys, it makes it sound completely different to all the other videos that people have heard. Again, it's little things that make you stand out, that make you look professional. And uh, these are, this has really changed our, our social media game. Positive for those who opt not to provide information, those who are, who, those who we don't let enter. We really get next to no pushback. So what happens is nearly everyone just gives the information. I would say that it would be an abnormality that anyone pushes back. Remember what Cameron was saying about, he puts the stand at the front door. We have an open house going now and we have private tours one-on-one -on -one that we can do either later today or anytime tomorrow, which is best for you. Yeah. And then sometimes at that point we need to get out of our own way. You know, it's like when, uh, we, we require uh, IDs before any showing when agents are working with buyers one-to-one, -one, we require that the agents Think about the car dealership, everyone. Our safety is critically important. Yeah, that's perfect. I know that's it's it's hard to argue that. Like, how how is someone going to argue that? It's right. like, uh, what I thank you, Renee. So all I want, I I got in late because I had my little girl swimming lessons. It was my wife is on a little sabbatical, so it was my uh, my turn to take her. But. Uh, I don't know if you guys talked about this. So for the newer agents, getting you know access to open houses is always sometimes a challenge, right? Especially in a seller's market where things fly off. 
Um, so one of the things that I'm working with, with one of my agents, as an example, Nathan, I gave him uh, a script to email to other listing agents. Uh, did you guys cover that at all or no? No. Like reaching out to other listing agents. So asking them, hey, can I host your open house? Uh, yeah, so yeah, that was, yeah, that was, that was brought up, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so I'll just send you guys my email script that I gave to my agent, Nathan. And basically what I shared with him is like, you wanna come off very professional and let them know that you have a system in place for that listing agent with questions that you're going to ask, like be specific what you're going to do for the open house. So lead in with professionalism and I can guarantee you'll be able to get a lot more people or a lot more agents respond to you when you do it. So I, I said, you call the listing agent first, if they don't pick up, leave a message and follow that up with this email right? Asking, hey, are you okay with me doing an open house? Here's my system. So I'm just going to put that in the uh, in the chat so you can download it and use it. Feel free. But because I want him to narrow that open house area to his farm here in Carlsbad, like that's what he wants to focus on. So if we don't have a listing in the office in that specific area, I want him not to give up on his farm and be specifically strategically reaching out to other listing agents in his farm because the more open houses he could do in that farm, the better it is for him, right? Because people are going to start seeing his signs and then it turns into true farming of a neighborhood instead of just doing random open houses all over the county and then no one really knows of you. So that's just my tip. That's all. And, and, and on that note, Randy, it's really important. I, I did every open house I've ever done. I did the same house until that house sold. And, and and always tried to stay in the, in the neighborhood. My first eight listings when I was brand new agent, my first eight listings all came from open houses because I was there every week. So the listing would expire or whatever. I, I'd be the one that they would see. Let's go over to Brian. We got a few more minutes. Brian, um, any tips on on uh, open houses that you want to throw in here? And, and I'll finish it off. Okay. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. yep. Awesome. Um, well, I, I apologize. I missed earlier on the meeting too, and I'm going to rewatch this because I'm sure I'd missed a lot of gold. And so what I haven't heard yet maybe was said earlier, but I would like to share with that newer agent that might be here or just remind agents uh, of some questions at the front door you want to ask. So if you're in a, you're in an open house by yourself, unlike what you have heard so far on systems, if you're in the front by yourself, don't assume that the people showing up are buyers. So I always ask a certain question. I just walk up, say, hi, my name is Brian. What brought you by today? Now, some people will sarcastically answer that. Well, your signs or this or that. But the goal was, is for me to find out and qualify who I'm talking to. What brought you by? Might be a neighbor. They'll say, oh, we live in the area. Oh, we're looking for a house for our kids. Oh, you know, we're just, we just saw the sign go up this week. We we're just curious. So, so the goal is to qualify who you're talking to so you don't waste a lot of time at the front door or in the house by yourself. And I like to say, it's like a doctor that does malpractice. You gotta take an X-ray or you can't be fixing or helping anybody. So take an X-ray pretty quickly and find out who you're talking to. Because if you're talking to a neighbor and another car shows up and somebody walks up and it's a buyer and they're ready and they've seen this property online and they're ready to go, that other person is gonna hijack you. And you don't wanna, you don't wanna sit there, just let the neighbor go and do your thing. Um, I'm going to tell you that the neighborhood expert always shows up at every open house. You know who they are because when they walk in, they like to tell you, the agent, all about the house because they've lived in the neighborhood for so long. They're not going to sell. They're going to die in the neighborhood. What I say when those people show up is pimp them for everything. Ask them, hey, what is it about this neighborhood you love? What is it about this area? If you were me at the end of this open house, which one of your neighbors do you think you would go talk to that you might think will be moving next? I want an introduction from the neighborhood expert who knows everybody. I want that person to say, you know what? I'd go over and talk to Mrs. Maselli. All her kids are gone. She lives in that big house by herself. Uh, I know she can't really go up and down the stairs anymore. I think I'd go talk to her. Great. What is your name? And would it be okay if I let Mrs. Maselli know you sent me over to talk to her? Leave it at that. Okay, so easier way because you're not going to knock on every door and not everybody's going to be home. But when that neighborhood expert shows up, really get into it with them. Ask them questions that other buyers had asked you earlier. Are there problems with the HOA? Is there any noisy this? Are there wildfires? Are there coyotes? Whatever it is, whatever has been asked of you earlier that you didn't know, 
the best way to handle that question usually is just say, hey, that's a really good question for the seller. What's the best way for me to follow up with you? And you're going to get real information because not everybody when they sign in will give you real information. That's what I got. Awesome. Great stuff. I'm going to get, I'm going to finish this off with just a couple of really important things. <clears throat> and, I, and I don't, you know, we all have our own styles and how we do things, right? I personally never advertise open houses ever. Uh, my goal of an open house is to get one buyer, one solid buyer. And so when I do an open house, I'll put out, I think Dennis mentioned this, a couple people put 20, 30 signs. Uh, we've done testing on this. We know that 90% of the people that come to an open house come from science. Uh, and we've done extensive testing on it over the years. Uh, so we don't advertise. And I always pick two homes that are available in the area that are vacant uh, and get permission to show those homes during the day, time of my open house. So here's my line. Uh, someone comes in, it's, I'm doing a 10 to four, which was always my time when I did my open houses. Uh, except when I was selling 100 homes a year, I went to four hour open houses because I couldn't, I had to break time to quadrants. But I would say, um, you know, by the way, you know, is this the price range you're looking for? Yes. You know, I have two more homes available down the street. Would you like to go take a look? They're like, you can do that. I'm like, yeah, let's go take a look. I'll just shut down the open house for a minute. I put a little be back in 30 minute sign on there. And now I have 30 minutes to create a report with this person. And I don't even talk about real estate. I talk about their family and you know, their life because I'm, a, I'm all about life and connection and that's what you do. So once you, um, once I do that, then I'm, while I'm with them, say, you know, if you'd like, we can go look at more properties today. They're like, well, you have an open house. I'll close my open house for you. You guys ready to look for a house? Let's go look for a house. And that is why I had such great success of selling, you know, 25 to 30 open houses, uh, homes every single year that I sold full time. Uh, the other thing is, and we'll finish on this, I know we're a minute late is I call it the 90 day rule. Things that you do today will generate business for you in 90 days. Everybody quits doing open houses because they didn't get a sale that day, right? I plan, if I start planting my seeds with open houses today, say it's what we in July 1st, right? I know my sales are gonna stop popping in in October. And so what I created was an amazing funnel of continuous business my entire career. Because, and I literally, I had, I had a two month period in my, in my five years that I sold full-time before I opened my brokerage, I had a two-month period that I did not have one sale. That was it. Every other time, I never had a vacancy because of the way I set up my open houses. But I was consistent in my marketing. And if you're not consistent with this, I think Renee said it before she had to hop off, well, don't do it. Go, go spend family time. Do this correctly as a business model, and you will rock it. We all, everybody you see on this panel here has rocked open houses, and you can too. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming on today. We will see you next week, and uh, have an awesome weekend. Thanks, you guys. It was good seeing everyone. You too, buddy. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Nice to meet you, buddy. Yeah.